Fluor thermal camera. This ought to be interesting. Hello everybody. Welcome to Builder Buy. I want to thank you for joining us. Today we're looking specifically at the Fluor One Pro. Now that's a thermal imaging camera for the Android smartphone. Now, why would we be looking at a thermal imaging camera? Well, after some questions came up that you guys presented, and I appreciate everybody for watching. Thanks for subscribing. The issue of heat came up. So there's five different ways we can look at heat. The thermal imaging camera one. And I first got the idea for this. Vincent thinks he came up with this, but it was not his original idea. I had watched Mike Holmes, and I had been watching him for quite a long time on three different channels. He does the remodeling, if you're not familiar with him. And he'd used a thermal imaging camera to figure out what was going on with a piece of property, a house. He went into a home, and he could see where the uh, heat loss was at. It was amazing. And I always thought, you know, that might have application to do some other things. But I never thought it possible we might do that with a computer because if you've ever looked at a thermal imaging camera, those are uh, kind of pricey unless that's, that's your business. Well, Fleur has come out with a device now that plugs into your smartphone, and that's what we're going to look at. So we're going to do an unboxing of that. You guys love unboxings. So we're going to do three things. We're going to do an unboxing, we're going to do a configuration, and a setup. Now, there should be an application or two that we will install with the smartphone. Uh, I'll tell you my likes and dislikes. I'm stoked to see what this does. We may not learn anything. This may be much ado about nothing. And then again, it may be quite interesting. But this video is about this camera getting it up and running. And then once we've done this, then the next video is going to be about looking at those three drives that are second generation PCI Express 4.0. And we're going to do a heat and a speed test and see how that works. And we'll get into the five different ways of testing in that next video. Unboxing overhead. Now the label's on the other side, but we don't need to look at that. So I'm going to open this from the bottom. It shouldn't matter. And I'll be gingerly about it. This should be pretty simple and straightforward. And for those of you that uh, are interested, I'll uh, put up some links. I'll have a link up on uh, Amazon for this, but I'll also put up some links on the technology. So you can learn more about the technology. What's exciting about this device is there's three different versions of this, and that goes to the technology. One that works with a regular smartphone. I've got an Android. Uh, my greatest concern is I have a sleeve on here. This is an OtterBox, and because of the proximity of the connection on the bottom with the USB-C port, I'm probably going to have to take the OtterBox off, which I'm not thrilled about, but considering what we're working with, I understand. Uh, but that's one concern I have, probably the only concern. The device should be good for about an hour. The phone... You know, either one of them, we'll have to plug it in and see and see what we get. So this is just going to be, I think, pretty quick, but it should be pretty interesting as we look at the hot spots on the motherboard. We're going to take a look at the specs. We'll look at the features, why this particular model. We'll look at the capabilities, and we're going to look at the requirements because, uh, you know, you change one thing, changes everything. There's a model below this, but some technology that hooks up with this phone on this particular device we're using, I think makes it worth that bump up uh, and the accuracy is phenomenal we'll, we'll get into that when we talk about the specs and i'll show you as well we'll put up a link where all that information's at so right now what we want to focus on is what's in the box let's go overhead we've got the box open and that that is that you got to love that amazon packaging fleur one pro now it's made for an iphone or an ipad and the one we're using of course well, i hope we got the right one we're getting ready to find out better double check that Infrared camera, attachment only, USB-C, and this is supposed to be for the Android. So the three styles are for the iOS, the micro USB, and the USB-C. And the USB-C, of course, for the uh, Android. Always good to double check. Fleur One Pro works for the iPhone and an iPad. Thermal imaging camera. It says it has a one-fit adjustable connector. That's written on the box. See if I can zoom in on that so you can see it right there. One-fit adjustable connector. That might work with our uh, auto box. Don't know. We're going to find out. Looks like it's adjustable. So let's get this open. See what we've got. The box is sealed. I can open from the top, but it looks like I would destroy the box if I do. If I open from the bottom, there's a tab. Yeah, there's a tab that comes loose. Wow. I would have expected a device like this would have had a seal on the box. There is no seal. Just this, just this tab. So this is what we'll do. And I shouldn't have to wear gloves for this. Okay. It says Fleur. So whatever this seal is here, this is what we'll cut. Ah, oh, there we go. It's magnetic. Where that tab is at, where that seal was cut, then that'll just lift right up. 
magnetic. Well, I'll be. And there it is. Okay, that's the device. So we have a manual. See the heat? Don't think there's anything else in this box. Oh, yes there is. In the bottom, a nice little pouch to keep it in. Fantastic. And I would hope a charging cable. Yes, so that's what's in the box. So far we had the device itself, a case to put it in, charging cable, the manual, and the sleeve that the manual was in. And that's where the device sat. That's what I like to know what we've got, what we have to work with. And just remember, I'm seeing this for the first time just like you guys. I have no idea what to expect. A thermal imaging camera that fits on the bottom of the smartphone is what I hope to see. And that's what we're looking at. A card here saying thank you from Fleur. Oh, and by the way, Fleur's been bought, if you didn't know that, by Teledyne. I don't know how that's going to shake out, but um, hopefully that's a good thing. We'll see. Products. Please take note. These products are classified under export control classification. Okay, well, we're not exporting, so we don't worry about that. And the thank you note, thank you for buying your thermal camera from FLIR. Of course, you know FLIR is an acronym. I'll put all that stuff up. And then getting started, FLIR 1 series. And there's a QR code in there we can scan in and package to the documents page. So what we're going to do is look at the illustrations. Explanations of the illustrations are provided in each language section. So what we have are key components that we're going to look at. Number one, as we look at the device and turn it over, Here's the business side, number two, number three, and then number four, the controls. So we can tell here, view the bottom. On the bottom, we've got number one, and then number two down here. So let's see what we've got on the next page. Okay, thank you, list of contents, the camera, the pouch, the USB cable, three items. View from the front, number one is the visual camera, which would be right here. Number two is the thermal camera, which would be right here. Number three is the phone connector, which would be right there. And then number four is the one fit height control. So we may be able to leave our auto box on. Now view from the bottom. Number one is the on off switch. So there's an on off switch right here. Number two is the charge indicator LED. So that would be right above here. We'll get this where you can see it. Right there's the on off button. Right there's the charge LED indicator. And that is the USB-C power connection. I hope this thing's already got some juice in it. We're gonna find out. It may not. If it doesn't, then we won't get very far. Quick start guide, charge the camera for one hour. Wow, I've got a blinking green light, which tells me the camera may already be charged. So what we need to do is we'll go ahead and go to the Google Play Store, and we're going to download the app for Fleur 1. Fleur 1 for Android. Okay, Fleur 1, we will install. Now, while that's installing, if the device is already charged, as it appears it may be, we should be able to go to the next step. So we're installing the app. So on the Fleur camera, I'm going to unplug it from power because I think it's got a charge on it. And the light went out. It's not blinking green now. That was quick. I've got the camera back up here with us. This was flashing green just a minute ago, and that was also flashing. So just a few, few minutes. It went from red, solid red, to flashing green, then it went off. So we should be able to take the next step. Push the on-off button on the bottom of the Fleur 1 camera to turn it on. The indicator will flash green when the FLIR 1 camera is ready. Connect the camera then to your phone. If needed, adjust the blue dial of the one fit and extend the connector to the appropriate length to fit your phone's protective case. Well, that's outstanding. So we have the phone. We'll turn it on first by pressing that button. It goes from red and the phone just vibrated. So apparently there must be something with Bluetooth on this. Okay, flash green when it's ready. It went from red now it's flashing green. And then we should be able to uh, connect it to the phone. So let's do that. And again, we have an otter box on here. Yes, my phone is scratched up. That's a, another story. It's just the protective cover. So we're going to connect this. I wonder if that's extended all the way. I'm rotating that out to make sure it's extended all the way. That is not USB-C. That's interesting. So we have the wrong one. That is for an Android. At least that's what it said. That's not what they sent. So, we can't go any further with that. How curious. Well, the box clearly stated that it's not. I went back and looked at what I ordered. I ordered the correct one, so I got the wrong one sent to me. Thank you, Amazon. Wondered how that was gonna work. Won't. So this has to go back. The box clearly states what we have, that this is for an iPhone. I hate it I broke the seal on it, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Take a look and I'll show you again. I'm glad we documented all this, but you can see, that's a USB-C port, and that's not what we've got. 
but I figure they know more than we do, so we've gone the process. So we'll have to return this and uh, get the right one, see how long it takes. So stay with us. It's really interesting that it charges from a USB-C port, but uh, anyway, so we'll put the pretty little case up. I'll tell you, for you guys, it's worth it. So now that's got to be returned. But that box clearly says iPhone, iPad. So I don't know what the deal was. Made for iPhone, iPad. We'll do another one. Okay, we're going to try that over. We have the new camera. So unboxing number two. We'll see this time if we got the right one. Now let's see what we've got inside. Should be the same thing, just a simple box. We'll take this out for the unboxing. And yes, sir, we got the right one this time. Can you believe that? I don't know how they did that, but it happens. So as we can see here, this is the USB-C version for Android, which is what we need. So this is a thermal imaging camera, and this is going to be thermography using the FLIR. And for those of you that are wondering the purpose of this, first of all, this is the FLIR 1 Pro. This is for the uh, next video we're going to do, which is about all about heat. So we're going to be checking for heat on the... Well, we may be checking for more than just heat on the NVMe drives. We'll, uh, we'll see what we see. And the tab on the bottom is pretty easy to pull loose. No tape. No seal. The seal, of course, is on the inside. So we'll cut that seal. It's a shame we had to open the other box, but uh, you know, they sent us what they sent us, and we knew what we know. I figured they knew something we didn't. So there's the camera, and that's the right connection. So we have the thermal camera, the regular camera, the adjustable knob that adjusts the height, of the USB-C connection and yes that's USB-C on the back side again all we see is the label FLIR and the adjustable knob but on this end we have the button and there's a light that will glow through here the USB-C connection for charging and an LED above that so now the next part we we'll hope this thing's going to have a charge on it so we'll follow the directions again what's in the box we have the literature the manual we have the camera should be the same as the other we have a case to keep it in, and of course the USB cable. Actually, it's USB-C to the drive with regular USB on the other end. To keep everything together, I'll get the box, put it all back together, and put it out of the way. Please take and read note. Export control classification. Thank you for buying from FLIR, and then of course the manual. So I don't think we need to go through that again. I've already taken the liberty of downloading the application, so I have FLIR 1 on the phone. I'm going to set that aside for the moment. We're going to see if this is plugged in and ready to go. I want to make sure this is extended all the way out. This way I don't have to take the sleeve off the phone, which I like. That thing is tight. So let's see how this is going to work. So USB-C. Plug that in. So apparently we don't have enough sticking out yet. So apparently that was all the way in. And now I've got it sticking all the way out. That looks pretty close, but it may not be enough. Depends on how far this comes over. Okay, we did an unboxing, we did an inventory check, we looked at our parts, we've charged the battery, we've gone over the components, and the next thing we need to do now is turn this on, then we'll plug it into the phone. So we will turn it on, we get the red light, it should turn green when it's ready. And of course the other thing we had to do was to extend the USB-C connection so we could get around our otter box that we have on our phone. Okay, it's blinking, now we'll plug it into the phone. So there's the connection, we'll plug that in, wakes up the phone, now we should be able to turn on the phone, and there it is. The application says, Floor 1, open Floor 1 to handle Floor 1 camera. And we're going to say yes. And it says, always open Floor 1 when Floor 1 camera is connected. So I'm going to check mark that. I'm going to say OK. And so now it says, welcome Floor 1. Welcome to the new Floor 1 app. No, I'm not going to skip it. I want to see what they have to say. So that's number one. Let's see number two. There's a video we can watch, discover the latest tips and tricks with thermal imaging. Remember. This is all about thermography, and the purpose of this is not the camera itself, but what we're going to do with it. We're looking at hot spots on the motherboard. Now, the one I've got up here on the board we're going to look at is a Gigabyte X399. But the purpose that we're actually intending this for is we're looking at the heat on the NVMe drives on the TRX40 because it's PCI Express 4.0 version 2. So a video we can watch maybe later. And FLIR1, join the FLIR1 community. So now it says enter, so I'm going to say enter. Good old EULA. We're going to say OK like we have a choice. Let's zoom in on that so you can see it. Improved experience. The user interface has a modern look and feel in combination with an improved user interaction. And by the looks of the dots, looks like we've got about five screens to go through. So let's do this. Main menu. 
The main menu is more focused on displaying the available options. So to keep it zoomed in, I'll scroll this over. So we've got color, camera alignment, temperature range, level span, and then lock span. And then three buttons up here on top. It looks like a uh, imaging mode. Infrared, mixed, and I believe that says DC. Infrared, MSX, and DC. So let's finish the tutorial. Main menu. Sliders, pickers, and controllers. We have improved the way you interact with the app, making it easier for you to handle your thermal images. And that's the way Mike Holmes would use it. You can see where the heat's at. Got to keep the phone alive. So let's go to the next step. Video modes. The video mode menu and the settings for the time lapse functionality are improved. Alrighty, let's take a look at that. Time lapse, photo, and video. Well, we just happen to have a camera looking at a camera, so, but we can operate independently. I was, it's interesting looking at this. I was telling someone today we've already used a uh, endoscope, autoscope, looking at some of the close tolerances on motherboards. And now here we are using a, uh, a FLIR camera for thermography to look at heat on a computer. Next step, FLIR 1, more to come. We are continuously working on improvements and new features for the FLIR 1 app. Keep your app updated to gain access to the latest news and improvements. Okay, got it. So we're going to say OK. And right there it says permission. Permission required. FLIR 1 needs permission. Oh, wicked. I'm going to zoom out on this just a bit because while I'm talking, it's, it's looking at me at my image. Wow. So you can see where the heat's at. Permission required. FLIR 1 needs permission to save and load images taken with the FLIR 1 app. No other data in your device storage is accessed. Well, absolutely okay. And next comment. Allow FLIR 1 to access photos, media, and other files in your device. Allow. And there we are. So this looks at, and that's an outline of the camera above, and that's me. So what I want to do now is move the whiteboard so we can look in the camera and uh, get some results. Because the next video coming up is where the excitement's at. Where we're going to take a look at the heat that's coming off. That's just amazing. Where we're going to take a look at the heat that's coming off the uh, three drives, which are all PCI Express 4.0, second generation. And that would be the Samsung, the Sabrent, and the Western Digital. So uh, as we look at this, I've got to turn this to look at the source, but I need to be able to, uh, I need to have that where it will look down. So I wonder if I can unplug this and turn it around. Let's find out. Otherwise, all I get is this, and we're looking up. It looks up at the camera, and it's looking at me. I need this to look the other way. So I'm going to unplug this and turn it around. Just that simple. And that's exactly what it's doing. Oh, this is kind of cool. I know you guys would love to see this, and I'm going to show you. I have got to get that positioned a little bit differently. Okay, this will give you a better view. Right there is the NVMe drive, and that's where the most of the heat's coming off of. So let's see if we can take a look at that. And if you'll notice the writing on the Radeon Pro video card, so that NVMe drive is glowing. You can see the slots. They are not. You can see the NVMe quad card. Quad card looks like it's got about as much heat or less than the video card. The chipset has perimeter heat, but the hottest is that NVMe drive. So the question on the camera is to take a look and see what we can do to set the uh, set the temperature. Let's take a look at that. So as I turn this around to hold the camera, remember the camera's here on the bottom, and I've turned the camera so that it looks, looks away from me. The camera's looking down while I'm looking at the lens, and that's what we're looking at looking up. So you'll have to bear with me while I move this around. So let's look at the top of this where we've got temperature we can set for calibration. And I believe we've got here from 29 29.8. To 38.7 so 29.3 to 38.3 Celsius I can also take an image we'll take an image let's go infrared mode color camera alignment and I will do temperature range 0 to 400 degrees centigrade and right now it is set from minus 20 degrees centigrade to minus 150 so that's a pretty good range select the temperature range that best fits the scene you're looking at I would say 0 to 400 so let's set that and it recalibrates. If you'll notice the numbers on the right. So we go from 31.3 to 39. We get a little bit different look on the heat. So 31.3 to 38.6. Let's reset again. There's a little button here at the bottom that I'm pushing. I'll do temperature range. And I'll go to the default, which was minus 20 to 150 degrees centigrade. I'll say done. Recalibrates. And I get 30. Down to 30 point, down to 30.1. Up to 38.6 degrees centigrade. So I'll be curious to see how that how that changes. So from 38 to 30 degrees. And if I recalibrate again, 0 to 400, okay. Again we go from about 30, this is 31.3 to 38.9 degrees. That looks like the heat we're getting right off of that NVMe drive. And as I kind of move it around, as I feel the quad card, I can feel heat, but I don't I don't feel it's not hot to the touch. 
the NVMe card is warmer than the video card. And of course, this is a uh, Radeon Pro WX7100 that's in here. But the NVMe drive in there, that's PCI Express 3.0. So let's get the scale back on the, if I can get the scale back up on the top. Or if I turn it, let's turn it this way, the way, the, the way it's showing. Okay, here we go. Let's get it back on top. Okay, we got it back on top. And we're 27. Now there's five different ways we can look at heat, but this is with a thermal imaging camera to see where the most heat's at. So this is not something that everybody's going to do, but this is using the Fleur 1 attached to our uh, Samsung phone. And uh, I'll put a link up to this camera in the video, as well as the uh, smartphone we're using. But I find that quite curious. I'm also curious to see how it looks at the uh, camera's losing connection. I'm curious to see how it sees heat. So the hottest thing in there is the NVMe drive. And as we look at that, point to it, you can see the variance we get right in the center. We're 26 down to 25. 25.6 degrees centigrade up to 36.6. So that tells us the hottest spot in there is 36.6 degrees centigrade. Hot but well within spec. So that's what we can do with the thermal imaging camera. Next up we're going to do with the video on the uh, probably the Western Digital. The WD Black SN850 is we'll use this and uh, as we run the speed test we're going to try to show that, and I guess what we'll have to do is a split screen where one, you can see the test for the uh, software at the speed, and as we'll look at the camera and split the screen so you can see the other half of that, so you can see what the camera's doing, what the software's doing, and we'll see what kind of difference it makes. So, hope you enjoyed this. That was a quick video about the Fleur 1. It does a whole lot more, but remember, our purpose is an intent for doing heat and a speed test on the NVMe drives. So, if you guys have any questions, thanks for watching. We're on to the next video. We're out. <laughs>